I like more than listening to people who are activating their voice and making a change in the world, whether it's personal change or artistic change, environmental change, social change. And whenever I listen to people talk about these things, I think about uh, words come to mind like their agile or their flexible thoughts, or their strength of conviction, or that when we make change as a group, we think of that as a movement. And those are all words of the body. And I am super interested in the connection between the mind and the body. And I know for sure, based on my own experience, that if you don't bring your body along for the ride, when you want to make change or be a change agent, then it's going to be a struggle. So all day long, you guys have been sitting here patiently listening with your cognitive minds. Only about 70% of the content you're taking in are you actually taking in from your cognitive mind. So in, let's bring our bodies into this discussion. So I'm hopeful you will all stand up for a second. Oh, much better, much better, much better. So do me a favor and take your legs a little bit apart and take your arms a little bit out to the side. I think the technical word for this is akimbo. That's your vocabulary word for the day. And if you don't mind closing your eyes for a second and just take an inventory of what you feel of your body in this moment in time when you're not using your eyes to navigate the landscape. There's no way to get it right or wrong, but you're sensing in, you're making a map of your body right now. All right? Take a snapshot of that moment in time. Open your eyes now, and we're going to wake up the energy in our bodies. So first thing, you're going to massage your face. Massage your face. And we live in the Ohio River Valley, so that means sinus and allergies, so really do it. Really give yourself a face massage and then wake up the scalp. Knock into your hair, pull on it. There you go. Now pinch your ears. The ears are reflexology points for the whole body. So basically you're speaking now to your whole organ body, energetic body, physical body through your ears. Come up and under and rub under your neck like this. If you're over 35, you know that this is an area that requires more oxygenation than other parts maybe. <laughs> Then you're going to tap down the front of the body down to the belly and make it make sound. Make it sound like clapping. Good. Down the outside of the arms, up the inside of the arms. Down the outside, up the inside. Other one. Down outside, up inside. Down outside, up inside. Legs. Down legs, up legs. Down legs, up legs. Back body. Talk to your back. Talk to your back. So I don't want to shout. Okay, now, rotating wrists. This is important. Every one of our joints helps create healthy cognition. Oh, you guys look awesome. Okay, now, into the webbing of the fingers. This is important. And then pull, pull, pull each knuckle out. Just so you know, when you do it with teenagers, this is where cracking knuckles occurs. So, I don't hear. Oh, there it is. Where's the teen? All right, so then go like this. Wake up all that energy in the body. Now go back to the start position. Close your eyes and just re-sense yourself. When I was in Cambodia recently working with girls who've suffered really difficult lives, after we did the same exercise, they, when I asked, what do you feel now? One of the girls said, I feel the excitement of my body. Can you feel the excitement in your body, the energy that is there? waiting for us to be the change or the person we want to be, right? So you felt your own individual potential. Now let's feel a partner's potential or the potential of connecting your energy to someone else. Not metaphorically, literally. So each person needs to face a person. You need to find a partner. And if, okay. So find your partner and rub your hands. It's going to be no fun if you don't have somebody to do it with. Start 
a foot away and then come towards your partner until you can feel their energy. And you're going to feel heat, vibration. Can you feel it? Back up, do it again. Did everybody do it? Feel it? Feel the connectedness? Okay. So now for now, we're going to sit back down for a second. So in quantum physics, Bell's theorem suggests that once we're connected, we're always connected. So you've just forever connected to someone's life. Um, so whenever I go to, often when I'm in leadership conferences, I hear a really cool quote that basically goes something like, your thoughts create words, your words create habits, your habits create actions, your action creates character, your character creates destiny. I like that. But what I'm interested in is thinking a lot about how are our thoughts being created. So if you think about early developmental activities, we really develop our sense of who we are in the world and are relative safely in the world before we have cognition, before we have rational thought. There's two primal ways in which we understand the world as basically our animal human body. So the first two reactions of the body, the first is basically the body's ability to understand fear. And that is from top to bottom, not just a cognitive notion, it actually is shifts in the landscape of the body Shifts in the breath, shifts in what muscles are contracted, shifts in the posture that basically tell our somatic system, the system of our body, to be alarmed. And in fact, in fact, what it does is it shuts off cognition because the body, the system of the body understands that if we get our brains in, a way, in the way at that critical moment, that we're not likely to be a good steward of the activity. So that's one primal response really important to our survival as a species. The second is the ability to basically move and um, create uh, movement and activity in the world. And if you think of an infant, you know, when an infant's born, if you held an infant like this, there's that sort of well, thing that happens with infants. In a, if developmentally everything's working, it's called the Landau reaction when they can actually engage the muscles of the back body and lift their heads in order to orient, you know, basically to start to understand. All of those muscles work in a pattern along the back side of the body, the back half of the body. So basically, ideally then, our muscular skeletal body, our chemicals and our hormones are working in our body, and none of these things are being habituated. They're not getting stuck. But what often happens is that something will happen early on that will become a seminal pattern that isn't able to be discharged. And for uh, most of us who have ever suffered any kind of stressful environment that we weren't able to process, basically what habituates is fear in a holding pattern. So we are all able to when we're able to use our body as a full resource, discharge any kind of harmful feelings that happen in the body so they don't become habituated thoughts. But oftentimes we just don't think of what our body is mapping for us or that some of our held patterns may be influencing our actions. So my work in the True Body Project, if I see a senior citizen who's struggling to feel happy, who's suffered post-traumatic stress disorder, or a girl who's a survivor of sex trafficking, or a teen who's struggling to rewrite how she feels in her own body. I'm not going to question those thoughts, and I'm certainly not going to judge them, but what I'm going to do is look at how to help recreate the resource of the body to be able to let, let that habituated pattern go so they can be more in the here and now making good choices. I've studied a lot over the years, so everything from neuroscience to somatics, I love learning about the body, but my
best and highest knowing comes from my own history of being super connected, profoundly disconnected, and then reconnected again. So I'm going to give you snapshots of that. As you all know, the history of our bodies in our lives is long and can be complex. So I'm going to make little, almost like slides for you. Slide number one. I'm five, six, seven, eight years old. I am lucky. I'm agile. I'm bright. I want to be a veterinarian, know the president, know a cowgirl. All those things felt very possible. I rode horses. I wrote books. It was all super exciting. For me, one of the things, the seminal things that happened is in the third and the fourth grade, I had two grand mal seizures and I was diagnosed with epilepsy. So in the way they treated it at the time was to put me on phenobarbital. So I didn't have seizures, but I also have no memory of fourth through seventh, eighth grade when I basically was still a willful adolescent and I stopped taking my medication. And my kind of memory of that time is waking up in a adolescent body, which is a hard enough body to live in anyway, but I wasn't prepared for it. I was used to the feeling of not feeling. And so for the next 20 years, even though I made it look like a lot of other things, I was really seeking action without feeling. So now let's jump to my mid-30s. I am alcoholic agoraphobic. Um, I'm also a parent. I'm also in a relationship. I'm also trying to fake like I'm actually engaged in the world. But I completely was not. I had, in order to leave the house in the morning, I took a bunch of anxiety medication, and then I, you know, my best thinking at the time told me more cigarettes and more Jack Daniels was really the way to go to create a high-quality life. I did not want to be in that place. But every day I kept doing the same things that created or sustained that environment of the body. And then you can imagine the quality of the thoughts that would come out of that. Not, not, they, basically there was a lot of feeling of trouble, which I generally decided was your fault or your fault or your fault. I couldn't hold any responsibility. I aggressed everything out. Uh, what happened? When a system is so dysregulated, it is a lot of things, but it is mainly exhausting. And finally, I just got so tired of feeling so disconnected from my self I wanted to be. I could still see that person, and that's not who I was. That's not a woman who blacks out, who forgets to go to her son's school things. It's not, I, I didn't want to be that person. So I did a revolutionary thing at the time. I moved. I moved out of my stuck place and I took a step into a new step, a new space. Ultimately that required 11 more steps with some backward steps, but ultimately it was 12 or so steps that were really helpful for me to begin to reframe how I understood the world. Also, my mother, who I had been ignoring her good ideas for a very long time, suggested I try Pilates. So within the same week of entering a 12-step program, I entered a Pilates studio. And I basically started being fascinated with my movement. This body that I had so betrayed, I became really engaged in grounding, finding the symmetry, finding the, um, the strength that the body held for me. What they call that in integrative therapy, now that I work in trauma landscapes, is basically I've integrated my thoughts, my emotions, and my physical body on the same page. And I'll tell you, the last 10 years or so have been magnificent um, once reconnected. I feel like I wasted a lot of time, so now I'm working really hard to make up for lost time. And a lot of wonderful things have occurred. But the most wonderful thing is if you've ever been in a state of kind of uh, dysregulation for whatever reason, you probably know that, that it tends to make for a very narcissistic, kind of closed in sense of oneself. I was sort of so fascinated with how I was dysregulated and I was so fascinated with my anger and I was so fascinated with all this self stuff that when I finally made the changes I needed to, started reintegrating my body. I went from essentially this closed in posture to discovering people. 
and I was able to be present in the here and now to truly begin to feel connected to other people, connected mind and body, connecting to whomever is sitting in front of me. In a perfect True Body Project world, I would not be talking this long. I would be listening to you. I would be listening to your stories, and we would create some art piece together, and that would be super cool. So, um, but what I'd like you to do is I'd like to re-invite our bodies into this discussion for a second of connectedness. And so let's go, can we stand back up a second? No? Okay, so a couple of things. Um, I know that even, even today I have to work really hard to be a super good steward of my body. I, if I let my blood sugar drop or if I have too many coffees, I can start feeling the way I used to feel all the time. Um, I also know that there's always something that I want to do to really express my true self in the world. So I imagine that all of you may have a thing that you know you need to attend to, a place you know you need to go, a class you really should take, a person you really should call. So for whatever that is for you, what is the space you need to move into? So decide it now in your own minds, and then maybe look down in front of you, and let's physicalize it. Make a line in front of you, knowing that the space you're in now is this moment of time, in time, and as soon as we move into another space, we've created a new reality for ourselves. But it's way easier to do it with help. So if you go like this again, and then just put your hand out to your partner next to you, and maybe like hands one on top of the other so you can feel that feeling of energy. And hopefully everybody's got somebody. You wanna come be my somebody? So the cool thing about this, we're just gonna hold hands like, even like, like there we go. So can you feel that energy again? Now look at the person you're standing next to. What if this is the person you've been waiting for your whole life to do the coolest project ever in the history of ever? It could be. So thank them in advance. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take a big inhale and an exhale, and we're going to step into the space that's our new self. So welcome to the future of you. So I know, thank you, I know that freedom comes in movement. And I know that if we're good stewards of our body and we bring our bodies along for this glorious ride of being a human being, that we can all make a difference we can all truly connect to one another, and that's where we can change the world.